Hello friends. Happy Wednesday. Carter Hall in my old basket pipe. That is my Wednesday pipe actually. So while I often get another one out for, for a video, this is the one that I started with this morning and I'm still smoking it. You'll probably start seeing this more on Wednesdays. Just because that's uh, the pipe I'm usually smoking. And the Carter Hall is, you know, I typically have a bowl of Carter Hall in the morning. And today I just didn't want to deal with anything more complex than that. I just wanted to enjoy it and uh, that's what I've been smoking. And it's a wonderful blend. So I've been keeping busy. Uh, work's been keeping me very busy, which I'm continually surprised at just how much work I'm getting done at home and how much harder I seem to be working at home. Uh, such is life, you know. I've learned to set boundaries. You know, I start at 9, I stop at 5. I've been pretty consistent with that. Um, I occasionally, very rarely, walk over to this side of the shop and, you know, play with the, with the stem, do a little bit of sanding or something like that. But I'm talking about like a 10-minute break now and then. And it's really just a stretch to get up and walk around a little bit. Um, you know, of course, I go upstairs for lunch. And around 3 o'clock, I'll go up and get some coffee or something. But uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty much full-out uh, work. I've been doing a lot of... Uh, computer modeling of, of stuff that I don't want to get into, but it's, uh, you know, it's fairly intensive thinking about how to model something and then running it and saying, oh, that didn't work, how do I change it, and you know, just keep iterating through that. And plus there's all the emails that i got to answer and keeping the people that I normally uh, supervise and I'm continue to supervise, keeping them engaged, and you know, it's it's been... It's a, it's a very interesting challenge to do your job remotely, as I'm sure many of you have learned. And what that means is that, you know, with that 9 to 5 effort, it, it's actually a lot harder to come down here after dinner and, and get anything done, because I'm just tired. And I'll show you an example of why you should not work when you're tired. <laughs> So I'm working on this pipe. I, I don't think he'll mind. This is a he'll mind me talking about it. This is a pipe from our friend Pipe Pool. It's a marksman. Um, obviously needs to be refinished, but it came to me because it needed to be banded. The shank was broken, actually pretty badly broken. So I got it fixed and I got the band on it, and that's good. And now I'm going to make it make a new stem because. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but it, well, if it catches the light just right, it's pretty badly chewed up, and I could file that out, but it's it's going to really weaken the the stem. So I'm going to make a new stem. It's a small one; it shouldn't take long. So the other night I came down here, and I you've seen my stems, you know, the process that I use. And this is yeah, it's a little two-inch stem. So it's the right length. And the first thing I do is drill it. So this is drilled, you won't be able to see, but it is drilled straight through. Um, taper drilled, 1 16th inch hole out here that will eventually be cut into a slot. And then on this end, it's uh, the opening that's going to connect up with the airway and the shank. It, so I drill it. And then I shape the mortise, and that takes a lot of time. I'm sorry, I shape the tenon. That takes a lot of time because you want it to be a really good tight fit. You don't want this to be loose. You don't want it to be too tight, especially on a pipe with a cracked shank. And then once I get that done, what I'll do is I'll figure out how much of this I can turn on the lathe and how close I can get to this diameter. So I measure this, and I go over to the lathe, and I very carefully approach this diameter. And then when I'm done, I, I start to do the handwork. 
Well, this fits beautifully, and uh, everything's great except I measured wrong. I hope you can see that. I'm only off by one hundredth, one hundred thousandth of an inch, but that's certainly too much to be off by. Um, I just read the calibers wrong on when I was measuring the band here, and I translated that to the lathe, and so now I've got a too thin stem blank that obviously is going in the trash, but I keep it on my bench to remind me to measure twice. And I, I can't say I've never done something like that, but it certainly seems like I do that sort of thing when I'm tired much more than I would if I you know, was well rested and uh, mentally alert. So it's good to know your limits. It's good to uh, it's good to take breaks and take rests. The other thing I wanted to share with you is, I'm curious what people are doing, just to occupy spare time. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm pretty tired at night, but I don't want to just go to sleep. So uh, if I'm not down here working, I'm usually you know watching something with my wife. And I talked last time about. Uh, I think it was called Brokenwood, that, that show we've been watching on Acorn TV. Um, but I don't really like to watch a lot of television. I, I like to read more. And I've picked up a book that I've read in the past, actually uh, know when I bought this because I used the receipt as a bookmark. So I bought this in 2003 and read it. It was a very good book. And I am rereading it now. So. It's by G.K. Chesterton, it's called Orthodoxy, and it's a, basically an investigation into Orthodox Christianity. Uh, this book was very influential. Uh, folks like C.S. Lewis were very influenced by, by Chesterton. Uh, Chesterton was a really interesting person, just in, in terms of his life. You know, he was uh, not a Christian until I believe he was in his 20s and uh, then became a very orthodox Christian uh, and, a, and a staunch defender of the faith. So, it's an interesting read. It's a bit, you know, it's not, it's not lighthearted, obviously. It's, it's theology, basically. But I like reading this sort of thing because it, it sort of helps me keep in mind the, um, the importance of continually having that relationship with God. Um, you know, this makes my faith part of my day-to-day -day life. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get into a faith chat here or anything. I'm just saying that's one of the reasons why I enjoy reading this kind of a book. Uh, it's also interesting, I mean, I think, I think uh, someone that, that professes to be an agnostic or an atheist would really enjoy this book because Chesterton's style is very much um, a debate type format. And he lays out an argument and then he goes deeper into that argument. Um, and I think it's important to challenge ourselves, no matter what our beliefs are, to always understand the other side's arguments. Um, because otherwise, how do we know we're, we're right? You know, if we just want to assume we're right and never challenge ourselves, that's probably not a good assumption. So that's what I've been doing to keep busy. Uh, I'm still reading that Perry Mason book. I haven't quite finished it, but it's not, um, let's just say that um, Earl Stanley Gardner did not write in exactly the style that Perry Mason turned into when he got on the TV. So it's a little, little hard reading. Very much, uh, you know, in the style of the uh, hard-boiled detective, the, uh, you know, Sam, Sam Spade, is that right? Dashiell Hammett type stuff. Um, but it's a little, and this is his first book, so maybe maybe I'm judging him harshly on, on his first book. But it's, it's just a little overdone in those aspects, and sometimes it's almost comical to, to read it. But it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. So I'm almost finished up with that and uh, started on this one, and that's it, more than enough to keep me busy right now. Uh, plus I've got pipes to work on. I 
and uh, Andrew, I'm trying. <laughs> I'll get it done eventually. Uh, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember names here, and I don't want to. I don't want to forget anyone. But I've got several other pipes that I'm working on. Uh, two of which I'm making videos on. Uh, one is uh, a really interesting one that I'm doing. Uh, a banding on, but it's a reverse calabash, and it's it's turning out to be an interesting challenge. And the other is a little Dunhill uh, that needs quite a bit of work. So I think you'll you'll enjoy those uh, video series, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, don't want to drag this on too long. I just wanted to check in, say hello, see how you're all doing, and let you know I'm doing just fine uh, and finding new ways to not go stir crazy. Take care, folks. Don't forget, Friday night is uh, our uh, live solo stream, or as I'm now calling it, our virtual pipe club. So please join me Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, and otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.